Now, in order to make money, you have to be able to sell something. That's the way the world works. You sell something in exchange for money. And if you're selling something that costs $10 and your goal is to make $100,000, that means you're going to have to sell 10,000 of these items to make the 100 grand. And if you want to achieve the $100,000 over the course of a year, that means you're going to have to sell 27 of these $10 products a day in order to do that. If you sell something that makes you $100, well now you're gonna have to sell not 10,000, but 1,000 of these items. And if you wanna hit the 100 grand in one year, that means you're gonna have to sell about three products a day. You're gonna have to sell one every three days. And if you can sell something that makes you $10,000, but now you only need to sell 10 of these, which means you only got to sell about one a month in order to hit that 100,000 goal in one year. This math is the easy part. Anybody can do this. The next thing is, what are you going to actually sell in order to make this $100,000? You have four different levels of opportunities that can help you get to $100,000 or a whole lot more. Number one will be the low risk and low reward opportunity. Number two is the high risk but low reward opportunity. Number three, which is probably the most popular, is the high risk, but also high reward opportunity. And then number four, which is my personal favorite, is the low risk, but high reward opportunity. I like this one because I have the least risk, but also the most upside. Now, a low risk, low reward opportunity would be something like just taking your cash and putting it into a savings account. Because now when you put your money into a savings account, you have very little upside, so very little reward, but also very little risk because you're FDIC insured. And if you put a grand or 10 grand into the bank today, well, when you check your bank account in a month or a year, it's going to stay the same. You're not going to get any growth, but that 10 grand is going to be there. You don't have to really be worried about losing that money by saving your money in the bank. A high risk but low reward opportunity would be something where you have nothing proprietary. This is something like selling on Amazon as an Amazon FBA reseller. If you were any good, well, you would be completely undercut by other people. Because if you can sell on Amazon, it's going to cost you a lot of money to start. You might have to go out and go into debt to start selling on Amazon. And then you're only selling somebody else's stuff. You have nothing proprietary, so everybody else can compete against you. And if you are any good and you can take any sort of market share, well, then Amazon is going to notice. And then they're going to create the exact same product that you're selling and they're going to undercut you. And so now you've worked so hard to build this market share and now you're going to be competing against Amazon. I don't like the idea of having something that can be competed against by anybody else or working on somebody else's platform to sell something where they can just come and undercut me. So it's high risk in that sense that if I'm any good, someone else is going to come and just take my spot, but also low reward because my upside is capped. If I start taking any market share, well then Amazon is going to come and sell the same product as me and I don't have anything that I can sell because I don't have anything proprietary. An Amazon FBA business isn't a very sellable company. Yeah, you have some Amazon FBA businesses that are being sold, but relative to owning your own product, owning something that you can control, owning something that you created, you're going to have way more upside with that than just selling on somebody else's platform. Then you have the high risk and high reward opportunities. And this is where a lot of people get drawn to because these are the things that draw in a lot of hype and a lot of excitement over the hopes of being able to get rich very quickly. This would be something like throwing your money into a meme stock. If you put your money into a meme stock, you might be able to 10x your money in 12 months but there's also a chance that you're gonna lose everything. So a lot of people jumped onto that idea, hoping that they'll be able to be one of the winners who can 10X their money. You saw similar things in the crypto space. When the crypto boom was happening in 2021, you saw this huge boom in crypto staking, some of them being super risky cryptocurrencies that really had no underlying value. The whole hope was that these cryptocurrencies would pay you like 700% interest, and then you would be able to sell this crypto to somebody else who didn't really care about the value of crypto. So you were just selling something that was worthless, hoping that you could get a lot of interest on something that was worthless. And the real hope here was that you'd be able to sell out before people realized how worthless this crypto was. And some people made a lot of money, but most people lost everything. 
So you have that high risk, high potential reward. This is also people who trade options, especially with a lot of debt. You have the opportunity to make a lot of money, but it's also very risky. I don't put my money into these types of opportunities because it's too risky for me. It's the same reason why I don't trade stocks. It's the same reason why I don't flip real estate. I don't like the high risk, high reward mindset. Instead, I like the low risk, high reward mindset where now I can have much lower risk, but I can keep the upside if I have higher rewards. Now, personally, I wouldn't put passive real estate investing and stock market investing into this quadrant. I'd kind of put it somewhere here in the middle because it's a passive investment where now I'm just looking to get a seven to 10% return on my money. So it's not a super low return. It's also not a really high return. It's just something more of a passive way to invest. So it's somewhere in the middle. But when I talk about the real low risk, high reward opportunities, this is where now I'm more referring to things like my own businesses, things like Briefs Media. Briefs Media is a financial newsletter company that I created. And for me, this was a low risk, high reward opportunity because for one, I have an audience here on YouTube who is interested in finance and entrepreneurship and money management. And it's a way for me to now create something to benefit my readers. My briefs media company creates newsletters. I have a market briefs, which is a newsletter for investors. And then I have business briefs, which is a newsletter for business owners and entrepreneurs and founders who want to be better with their business. Both of these newsletters are completely free and it didn't cost me a whole lot of money to start it because I already had a staff working for me at the Minority Mindset Company. And so then we started creating this newsletter. Well, this newsletter, now I could market it directly to my audience. So my cost to start the company wasn't that high. I don't have to go out and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars hiring new people because I already had a staff that had the ability to write these newsletters. And then as the newsletter started to grow, now we were able to monetize. You might be wondering, how do you monetize if it's free? Well, we have some advertisement spots that we sell to our sponsors. And so now I'm able to market it for free. We were able to get it started at no additional cost. And so now we have a lot of upside because the newsletter can keep growing. The more the newsletter grows, the more advertisements that we can sell and the more that we can sell these advertisements for. So low risk because it's low cost to start. It didn't take me a whole lot of extra energy to start and high reward because the business is scalable. There's no limit to how many people can read the newsletter. And so if we can keep growing the newsletter, we'll be able to charge more money and grow our revenue. It's very scalable. Compare that to something like here, where if I owned a physical store, now there's a lot of risk involved because it costs me money to open up a store. I have a physical presence I have to pay rent for. I have to hire an employee to work there. But there's also a limit to how much money I'll be able to make from my physical store because there's always a limit to how many people can come inside. There's a limit to how many sales that I can have in an hour. And there's a limit to how many hours a store can be open. Versus with something digital, I have none of that. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.